Welcome to the Digital Technologies Modules. I am Dr. Jason Zagami, and I will be supporting you through this eight-week course to better understand the Digital Technologies curriculum. And Professor Glenn Finger will be joining us for Module 5 on Design Thinking. So why do we have this new Digital Technologies subject? Essentially, student interest in studying computing has been on the decline since the turn of the century, with numbers decreasing in senior subjects and similar impact in tertiary studies. And this has occurred despite widespread adoption of digital technologies by all industry, and acknowledgement that most new jobs will require an in-depth understanding of computing. So we are trying to address this declining interest. Digital technologies, computer science and coding, the language of computers and technology should be taught in every primary and every secondary school in Australia. And While many factors are involved, we must take some blame for a systemic failure resulting on our focus on ICT education, where the teaching of applications, such as the office suite, multimedia, etc., has become increasingly unattractive to students, seeing little value in studying subjects to learn things that they were already teaching themselves how to do. Yes, this was often done poorly from a teacher perspective, but from a student's perspective, such study was not how they were engaging with technology. In response, the digital technology subject has been developed, differentiating previous ICT studies that taught students how to use digital technologies to now expect that students will be taught how to create digital technologies. Learning how to use digital technologies is now distributed across all learning areas through the ICT general capabilities. Now this includes responsibilities in digital technologies, where we still teach the ICT we need students to use in the subject, such as robotics and programming languages. But the focus is now on how we can create with technology, particularly the creation of solutions to problems involving the development of new technologies, such as a database, an app, or a digital device. This is a huge change in thinking, and one that will take you a while to come to terms with. But right now, you are no doubt focused on what you need to learn to get started with teaching this subject. The teaching of digital technologies can be approached in three main ways. Reflected in the TPAC model that is used to optimise the integration of pedagogy, content and technology. Now, teachers might start with technology. Those technologies they have available or are familiar with. Be that a self-paced online worksheet tutorial to learn a programming language or a robotics kit and associated worksheet activities to create a range of automated devices. And teachers can assemble units of work and lessons using these resources to address the curriculum content and assessment requirements. Or teachers might start with the content of the subject, working through the Australian curriculum document and finding and selecting a series of activities and mapping these to each content and assessment descriptor. The C2C material for digital technologies is a good example of this. Or teachers could start with a pedagogical approach and use this to frame activities and resources to support student learning. Now this is the approach modelled in this course, using a project-based learning constructivist pedagogy to support teacher planning and student engagement with the curriculum. And suggestions on how this can be done will be presented through the modules of the course. Now, this is a more complex approach than taking existing ICT tools and building a course around these, or selecting from a range of activities to construct units of work. But in approaching the course in this way, you will still be presented with a range of ICT tools and the activities that you could use in these other approaches. While on the other hand, technology and content approaches are more difficult to encompass a pedagogic perspective, particularly ones such as project-based learning. They tend to do a reasonable job with less complex pedagogical approaches such as problem-based learning or direct instruction. But the extra steps needed to engage with project-based learning, and especially student-centered project-based learning, are more difficult to develop when approaching the subject from a technology or content perspective. What you will not find in this course is a single set of tools or activities detailed as the approach to be adopted, 
or a specific programming language, robotics kit, units of work or activities. There will be examples, but in the context of a mix of resources that teachers and students can draw upon to support project-based learning. However, if you're not yet ready to engage with project-based learning, you can still find a range of resources and activities that you could use with students to construct your own units of work, particularly in modules 6, 7 and 8. Now this is not to say that the three approaches are exclusive of each other. The ideal learning environment and planning process will encompass all three, using a wide range of ICT tools to support student learning, activities that develop student understanding of the content, and a strong pedagogical model, such as project-based learning, that ties these together and extends them. Online self-paced worksheets for programming and robotic instruction sets, along with the specific activities that students can complete, are very useful in developing student lower order knowledge, understanding and application of digital technologies. While student-centered project-based learning approaches, such as modeled in this course, have their strength in the development of higher order thinking skills. Now the technologies learning area encompasses five sets of higher order thinking skills. Design thinking is primarily addressed in the design and technology subject but still has relevance to digital technologies in providing a process by which students can effectively develop solutions to problems that they have identified. Computational thinking is the core of digital technologies and provides students with the perspectives needed to conceptualize solutions to problems through the use of digital technologies. Systems thinking provides students for wider perspective on the problems they are trying to solve and how their problem may be part of an interrelated system that needs to be understood fully to address their problem. Futures thinking positions students' problem solving as a process by which they can bring about their preferred future and that they are empowered to bring about such futures. Strategic thinking encompasses project management, but also collaboration, teamwork, creativity, entrepreneurship and goal setting, the tools of managers and leaders so that students can bring about the solutions to their problems. To assist, you, to assist you in exploring these concepts, the course is structured around modules, one for each of the eight weeks of the course. The first five modules explore how to develop a higher order thinking skill. The remaining three modules explore three types of solutions that students may develop using digital technologies, coding, robotics, and information systems. Each module is further broken down into five concepts, each of a short video clip explaining the concept and a reinforcing activity to help you understand the concept. Each of these pairs of video and activity should take on average about 10 minutes to complete. Reinforcing activities have been differentiated for teachers of F2, 3 to 6 and 7 to 10. If you teach across multiple bands though, just select the one you're most interested in. Now each module will also include a summary video clip and a 10 question multiple choice quiz that can be used to gauge your understanding of the concept and together should take about 10 minutes. To complete though, you may attempt the quiz as many times as you wish, um, but you do have to meet a 60% pass mark. To assist you in completing each module, there will be notes available that you can download, refer to and elaborate on as you watch the videos, complete activities and attempt the quiz. Now these represent the required eight hours of the course. And if you successfully complete the eight quizzes, you will receive a completion certificate at the end of the course. But each module also has three one-hour extension activities that you could choose between, coding, robotics, or online discussion. Now each extension activity will take about an hour to complete. And while you're welcome to complete more than one, this is not an expectation. Coding and robotics extension activities do require some tools. And we have chosen the Makey Makey interface boards, the Edison Robotics Kit, the Codebug microcomputer and Microsoft Excel spreadsheet application as these technologies. And you should try to have these tools available for use during the course if you wish to engage with the extension activities. Online discussions will occur on Wednesday afternoons from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. using Collaborate and will focus on addressing your questions for the modules that week. Now, in addition to the required activities and extension activities, we also have provided a collection of resources related to each concept that you might use with students or in developing your own units of work. And while these resources may help you understand the presented concepts, 
they will take you considerably more time to explore than is expected during the course. And there is also an optional activity in which you can develop your own student solution, which describes what students and teachers might do when developing solutions to problems using student-centered project-based learning. And examples of these are provided for F2 in Module 6, 5 to 6 in Module 7, and 9 to 10 in Module 8. And if you complete a student solution to a reasonable standard, you will receive credit for further study in a graduate certificate in professional learning. So what should you expect from this course? The course focuses on concepts and the development of higher order thinking. Activities and resources are provided to support this. And while many of these can be used by teachers as distinct activities with, with students, the course presents a unified approach to support project-based learning, rather than a specific scope and sequence of activities to support a particular unit of work. Each module and concept addresses aspects of the Australian curriculum, including the rationale, aims, structure, content descriptors, and achievement descriptions. And these are mapped in the course handouts. But this is not a course in which you will read through each line of the curriculum document. Um, there would then be no time left to develop your understanding of the content and how you might teach it. While the course covers all aspects of the curriculum, you should still read through the curriculum documents yourself. It is not easy, and it's full of new terminology, but in completing the course, the curriculum should become clearer as to the intent and the requirements. And there's also a glossary of terms that may assist. For teachers of to 6 this course should prepare you to teach digital technologies. Some areas you will want to become more familiar with, such as a prog programming language or a robotics kit, or a particular activities such as ones described for use of drones or wearables. But overall, you should be well placed to teach the content of the subject and have a good understanding of the technologies involved and how a project-based learning approach can develop higher order thinking in di digital technologies. For teachers of 7 to 10, this will be an introductory overview. In addition, you will need to learn a general purpose programming language and a structured query language in order to fully address the learning outcomes of the curriculum. And you will find these provided in the resources for the course, and they can support your further engagement with information systems, robotics, and other technologies that we've explored or will be exploring during the course. Wherever possible, the course has used online activities that do not require you to create an account or download and install software. But in a few cases, this has been unavoidable. But you can, of course, choose to engage with these resources or not. So welcome again to the course. There are a few introductory activities you can complete and an optional TPAC survey. But you're now ready to progress to Module 1 and explore our first higher order thinking skill, strategic thinking. I hope you really enjoy the Digital Technologies modules.